What's up, guys? Welcome to Broke and Stressed, a PT student podcast where we talk about our lives as broke and stressed physical therapy students. Throughout grad school, you'll come to find that the struggles that you're having happen all the time to thousands of students across the country. You are not alone. In this podcast will share our personal stories and walk you through how we overcame some of our own struggles. I'm your host, Ruben. Let's have some fun, have some good conversation, and let's get into the episode. Hey guys, welcome back to Broken Stress. Welcome back to the podcast. Today we have my friend Ricky on the podcast today. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Ricky? Hey guys, my name is Ricky. I am currently a pre-PT student. I graduated from undergrad in January of 2020 um, with my bachelor's in kinesiology and a minor in computer science. Nice. So guys, Ricky and I have been planning on doing this podcast for, gosh, I don't even know, months now? The summer, I think. Yeah. So ever since I started my podcast, she's always been hitting me up, and I've been meaning to like schedule <laughs> times with her, but I'm so bad about it for some reason. And here we are. We finally got together. We finally sat down. It's always, it's always been like a game of like, oh, shoot, I forgot, or oh, shoot, like I'm busy. Can we reschedule? And yeah. we're, we're, we're finally here, guys. We did it. Definitely. It's like playing tag. <laughs> yeah, literally. And I'm excited about this one because um, since Ricky is a pre-PT student, I'm excited for you guys to listen to her journey and what she's going through. And, you know, most of the people I've had on here already um, established PTs or they're just already student PTs, but it's going to be good for those listening who are pursuing PT or like in the, in the, um, going through it right now, just to listen to her experience and what she's going through. So but before we get started, guys, you know, my tradition, I like to have my guests share an embarrassing moment. And since Ricky's not in PT school, she could share any embarrassing moment that she feels comfortable sharing with you guys today. Um, I think an embarrassing moment for me that I can think of would definitely be an undergrad when I was um, in one of my computer science classes. Um, mm. So... You know, growing up, I would I, w- I would like to say I was a good student uh, for the most part. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't, I, d- I wouldn't say that I was a teacher's pet, but I feel like I ended up being teacher's pets just to most of my teachers just because I'm very personable and I just like to talk to them. And my, um, I believe this was my junior year of undergrad and I was taking a computer science class called Data Structures. And this is, um, and I know most of our listeners and viewers are PT students who probably have never taken a computer science class, but um, this class is an upper division CS class. So just for some background context, um, it's an upper division, excuse me, it's an upper division CS class. And the very first assignment that I um, submitted, I was like super confident. I did it early, like maybe I wouldn't say a week early but it, I would definitely turn it in maybe like two three days early and then I get it back and I get a d minus and <laughs> I'm just like what in the what what happened and so you know I go to my professor and I ask him hey what did I do you know wrong like everything compiled correctly like everything should have worked and he said that I forgot to save a command or something like that and so when I submitted it it didn't, I guess it just didn't work on his computer um, because I didn't save it properly. So just keep that in mind. That's actually not the embarrassing part. The embarrassing part, and let, you know, that was the first assignment. So August, right? Um, first, uh, first assignment of the semester. Um, so that was in August. And then come like November, December time for finals. And we had two assignments left. And throughout the entire semester, we had maybe like six or seven projects and each project uh, kind of built on itself. Um, And so like, let's say whatever I did for this week, you know, I'd have to use for the following week's assignment. Um, And I know this is kind of long, but bear with me. So the last two assignments, you know, I pretty much spent the entire semester trying to raise my grade from a D minus. You know, most people start off with an A in the beginning of the semester. I started off with a D minus. So I was trying to figure out how to just pass the class at this point off like from day one. And um, I, you know, the, the second, we had two assignments left and the one before that, or the second to the last one, 
I aced it, got a 96. I think my grade was maybe at like an 80, maybe like an 82 at this point. So I was feeling pretty confident. I was like, you know, even if the final is hard, I can still get at least a B in this class. I'm chilling. So we get to the last assignment, get it all done. Same thing, you know, stay up. This one I stayed up pretty late for because it, it was a really hard one. It's the last assignment of the semester. All of my projects was, you know, um, kind of this one project built on my previous project and just it's a heavy, it's a heavy assignment. Turn it in. And my professor was like, okay, this is the last one and I am not going to see you guys after finals. So stop by my office tomorrow and I'll give, I'll give you your grade for this assignment because he graded it right away. So the next day, bright and early, 9 a.m., go into his office. Like, hey, I'm here for my assignment. Hands it to me. 62. And I ask him, what happened? I'm like, everything was fine. It was all correct. And he said, you forgot to add. Um, so in CS, it's pretty much like a, the way that it works in CS is that you have, think of it as a folder. And in order to submit the project properly, you need to have all the previous folders in that one like grand folder. So apparently I forgot to compile a folder in there that was really needed for my project to run. And so I guess I forgot. I turned it in at 3 a.m. So I guess I can understand how I forgot. Um, but I forgot. So I got a 62 and I went into the final, I think with like a 70, you need, you need a 75, no, not a 75. You need a 73 to pass the class. And I think I went into the final with like a 71. And I was just sitting, I remember the day of the final, I was like, I, and all my friends knew, like know about this. It's a small class, so everybody kind of knows each other and each other's business. And I'm sitting there during the final, like, this is it. This is the end of my, my career as a CS. I think I was a major at that point. And I was like, yeah, this is it. I'm done for, I'm gonna take this class. I, this is my, cause I think in undergrad, you're allowed one fail like one failed class to graduate. And I was like, this is my one failed class. But, you know, finals went by and I got my grade and I passed with a C. Um, and I'm pretty sure my professor pity passed me because um, there's no way that I would have gotten a really good grade in that final to actually pass the class. So that's my embarrassing story. Um, I know it's like super academic, but to this day, I still think about that project and just the fact that it runs perfectly fine on my computer still kills me um, because I just forgot that one thing. So moral of the story is hit save, double check your work in high Dude, school, college, PT school, uh... <laughs> everywhere else. It's so important. So pretty embarrassing. Yeah. Oh my God. Just that one folder literally made her makes or breaks your grade. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it was just, it made or break the project. Yeah, or makes, but it's, it, makes it was still project. functional though, right? So no, it wasn't. Oh, it so wasn't because okay. because I I forgot to add it in there. It's pretty much as if the program didn't open at all. Oh, um, I needed darn. it. <sighs> yeah, dude, that sucks. I'm sorry, but it's okay. <laughs> no, on to better things. On to yes, better absolutely. Things. That's, that's the past. You, we're, mm -hmm. we're moving forward now. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you're in CS, but you're also pursuing PT. So how, what made you want to get into both of those things, like concurrently? Because <laughs> usually those are both completely like different fields, different yeah. majors. Like how on earth did you start this? You know, I think I'm such an overachiever um, that I call myself a Swiss army knife. I am like a, a five in one tool. Um, I do, a I like to do a little bit of everything. And in high school, um, I think my high school is very good at exposing students to just a variety of things. So, you know, they were very good at encouraging us to do visual arts, but also sports and, um, you know, other media production, like that kind of stuff. I think I was very fortunate enough to be in a high school that put me in a position to try a lot of different things. And my senior year of high school, I tried a computer science class called Java. Um, and I was just really interested in it and I, I was good at it. You know, I was one of, I think, two girls in that class. And that second girl actually went on to get her um, bachelor's in software engineering, which is really cool. Um, so 
I just felt very at home with CS. Now with PT um, and I guess exercise science or kinesiology, um, it's always been an interest of mine just because I've been in sports all my life. Um, I wouldn't say that anatomy came easy to me, but I think it was very interesting. And even in high school, um, like we also had a kinesio, like an intro anatomy or kinesiology class. And I was super interested in that. I didn't take it. So when I got to college, I was like, okay, you know, what do I, what do I want to do? What do I want to be? And I initially declared as a bio major because I had this grand vision um, of being a pediatric doctor. Just, you know, um, I kind of wanted to work with kids and I was like, okay, well, I want to be a doctor. And this is, you know, just think about freshman year. You kind of don't really know what different like career paths are out there. So when you think healthcare, you think nurse or doctor. So to me, I was like, okay, doctor, but not really thinking about like specifically what doctor. Um, and then I wanted to work with kids. So that landed me in wanting to be in pediatrics. Took bio, hated bio. <laughs> so I switched out um, my sophomore year into exercise science. And I took um, like an intro to exercise science class that talked about statistics and Oh gosh, just a bunch of research about the human body. Um, Cause our, you know, when you think of kinesis classes and exercise science, it's like biomechanics and motor development. So it's kind of intros to those classes in that one big intro class. And I really liked it. I absolutely loved it. Um, I was a track athlete. So the application of exercise science to track is amazing, especially pole vaulting when it comes to biomechanics. Um, so I was just super interested in you know, in, in, I guess, exercise science. Um, and then PT came into play, I guess, mid, um, mid sophomore year. And, uh, just full disclosure, I am one of those people that switched majors five times. I was like, let's do business and let's do media and let's do CS and let's do exercise science. And let's, I thought about it all. I switched and I, you know, um, I just always ended up landing on CS and exercise science. So when I narrowed those two down, I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And for a while, I wanted to double major, realized that's crazy. It's going to take me seven years to get out of undergrad. Um, so I, um, by the time I was, I guess, the end of my junior year, um, I decided that, hey, you know what? I have already done a lot of work for exercise science. I might as well finish the major, get the minor in CS. Um, and that's what I ended up doing. Um, that doesn't answer your question, but I'm going to answer your question. Um, so the reason why um, I picked both, I think it's just because I've, I don't know, I've just always loved video games, and I've always had a thing for tech. I was a huge, I mean, I still am a huge Apple fanatic. I think you know that, Ruben. Um, I'm all about Mac. You know, my uncle worked for Apple for seven years, or I think eight years or so. So growing up, I just always had Apple products all around me. And then the iPhone came out and, you know, that's the start of me being in the Apple ecosystem. And I carried that with me throughout high school, throughout college. Um, and I was thinking like, this would be really cool to, you know, be like a software engineer. So I pursued CS and then um, for exercise science and PT, I am a PT's worst nightmare. I didn't go to any of my PT sessions. I like got evaluated and then never came back. I had a ton, a ton of injuries in high school. You know, oh, I- I'm um, so triggered right now. <laughs> Just, I'm so sorry. I started sorry. my clinical stars and like whenever I get a patient that I prep for and that they just no show. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm just gonna pretend that I didn't hear that. Okay, keep going. Um, so in uh, high school, both of my and let's see if I can get my anatomy right bursas on ankle on my ankles. Both of them, I smashed both of those. Um, playing basketball, I'm pretty sure that's super common. Um, it's not good, but it's terrible. Um, but I didn't do my rehab properly, so that ended up getting um that put me in a position of getting my knees injured. So both of my knees now are like hyperextended because of my terrible ankles, which leads to my bad posture. And you already know the rest, you know, in the PT world. So I, you know, whenever I learn about rehab and the human body, I always related it to the things that I was able to feel. Um, and I think it's just 
I don't know, it just really came easy to me. And I think that um, in my years of working in retail and customer service and stuff, I think that, that that's easily translatable to the PT world. Um, Cause you know, in retail, in order to sell something, you have to talk to people and be personable, um, at least if you want to be a good salesperson. Um, so in PT, I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, it's the same thing. So I shadowed a couple clinics here and there, um, hated it to be completely honest with you. Um, I think I was in a clinic, oh. um, where the population was mostly catered towards, um, it was ortho, but the cases were mostly of people who were in car injuries, um, or like more of the geriatric population where they, you know, are working on. I know it's this is my third hip replacement like that kind of stuff and I was just not about it um but there were maybe like two people that came in and they had injuries um like sports injuries and I was like okay that's what I like so it wasn't that I didn't like PT I think I just wasn't interested in the settings um or the setting that I was currently in um so in order to kind of expose myself a little bit more I worked in the athletic training room at my high or not my high school at my undergrad um, and I worked alongside some of the athletic trainers. Now, athletic training and PT are not the same, but they're very similar. Um, so I would kind of help rehab some of the athletes by just kind of taking them through their, their, um, their workouts and their exercises, um, and then talking to them. And I was like, you know what, PT is kind of what I want to do. So I gave it a second shot and I ended up working for a PT clinic. Absolutely loved it. Um, and granted there were still those people that came in with, you know, like car injuries and, um, the elderly would, you know, come in with some hip problems and stuff like that. But I think I just had a different perspective on it. So that was a really long way of answering your question. Um, but also it's, it's just so hard to kind of explain it all, to be completely honest with you. Um, but to tie in CS in there, um, I went to, there's this place in Oregon called OMSI. It's like the Oregon, oh gosh, I completely forgot, but it's like a California Academy of Sciences building where, you know, they have ex exhibitions for all kinds of different science things and they had a robotics section. Um, and so, you know, they would show the different types of technologies that people would create to help rehab. And so when I saw that, I was like, that's ultimately the direction I want to go into. Um, you know, technology evolves so fast. Um, especially right now with COVID-19 and us all being inside, I think we are kind of getting a different perspective and a, a different type of appreciation for technology. Um, and I think that is sent, like, not essentially, but um, I think in the long run, that's kind of where I want to go. I want to be able to use my, I guess, my knowledge and my passion for tech um, to somehow drive the PT industry forward. So that's, uh, edit that how you would want to, because I kind of went all over the place with that one, but it was, it's, it's honestly a hard question for me to answer, um, because no, they're good. very, very different fields. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important. I think not a lot of people, not enough people merge the two together. But what's funny is that on my Instagram, I've asked a few PT students, hey, if you didn't major in PT or if you didn't major in kinesiology and went into PT, what would you do? And they would say something that has to do with tech. Um, so it's either software engineering or just generic, you know, computer science. Um, and then vice versa, I asked some of my software engineering friends and my web development friends and they'd say kinesiology. So I think that the two fields have a lot more in common than people think. A um, lot of differences lot of differences but more in common than people think and I think that it could just be such a good combination um, of fields I guess yeah I think it's so interesting because I mean lately ever I mean ever since I started I took that little bit of that boot camp that you told me to take um, just some basic coding stuff and I really enjoyed it. I've always liked tech myself I always like computers so I think if you were to ask me that question what would I do if I didn't choose PT it, I would go the tech route and it's funny because my roommate went the tech route and he always asked me about PT stuff because he loves it but he's just yeah. good at he's just good at computer science so that's why he's doing it so it's just like wow it's very interesting to hear that perspective from like mm -hmm. someone else yeah absolutely yeah 
So talk to me a little bit about kind of the timeline of like when you just finally decided PT, when you graduated and what you what you did to get you try to get you to PT school and what you're currently doing. So pretty much just tell so me your I, whole life story about PT. <laughs> <laughs> and my social security number is, I'm just totally kidding. Um, so I, so long story short, here's the abridged version. So pretty much um, went into undergrad bio, hated it, switched to exercise science. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to regret if I don't take at least one CS class. Took a CS class, um, loved CS switched into CS, realized it's going to take me seven years to graduate if I, you know, did both. And I didn't want to waste all the time I spent doing exercise science. So I switched back to exercise science. Um, and the reason why actually is because of a, um, because of a motor development, a motor development class. And then I took another kind of like sports psychology class. Absolutely love that. Um, and that's actually what my, um, my thesis was on is a sports psychology topic. So decided that I was going to go to PT route, but to be, to be completely honest with you, I thought that I was not cut out to be a physical therapist simply because of my grades. And, um, I feel like this is something that a lot of people feel. Um, and I studied abroad. I was given the opportunity to study abroad and go into a sports science. So in England, they call it sports science. Um, I was able to go into a sports science program over there and take exercise physiology, sports psychology, and nutrition. It's called an advanced nutrition class. So it's actually really cool to be in a different country. And Dude, sick. yeah, it was kind of like same, same, but different. Um, and just kind of see, especially the nutrition class to see that the way that they would focus on certain health issues. Um, Cause you know, like for us, it's diabetes, right? Um, it's kind of like a world problem, but in the UK, um, one of the things that they actually focus on when you talk about like health and fitness and stuff like that is the cigarette problem um because a, a lot of people like a lot of kids still smoke cigarettes it's kind of ridiculous um and oh, also man. their alcohol um age limit is 18 not 21 so you have a lot more college kids drinking beer um essentially so it was really interesting um so i had that great opportunity super happy that i did that and i actually took that my senior year um, my last semester of senior year i studied abroad came back um, early for graduation, or I guess to walk. I didn't really graduate, but I walked. And then I took another semester to finish my classes and my thesis. Um, and then that's when I presented in January of 2020. And now here we are. Um, and I'm taking a gap year. Um, I was initially going to apply this year for PT school. Um, but with all the prerequisites that I have to do, I decided to just postpone it until next year. So I guess I'm taking a couple of gap years. Um, but right now I'm just working, trying to take my classes, trying to tackle the GRE. Um, and also with that, I mentioned the study abroad thing because I was feeling super lonely um, in the UK when it came to kind of like the pre-PT route because they didn't have physical therapy as a career, um, or at least they didn't have it as a grad school career. You know, it was a, you take PT pretty much or rehab sciences pretty much as an undergrad and then you graduate and you're practicing rehab specialist you know um so I went online did a little bit of digging and uh I found pre-PT grind and you know Joseph and Casey um, my mentors um were just super they are super passionate about helping people literally just like me who feel like they can't get in um to PT school and they're, they're good about looking at your, I guess, overall like profile or portfolio and saying, hey, you can leverage these experiences to still become a PT. And that's exactly what kind of, you know, they did for me. And that's when I was like, okay, cool. CS was not a waste of time. Just because I'm going into PT school doesn't mean, you know, I can't use my, I, I does, it doesn't mean that I have to put computer science away. And it doesn't mean I have to put all my other hobbies away. Um, so that's kind of what I'm trying to use and I'm trying to advocate for is that just because you are in a different field than your other passions and hobbies, it doesn't mean that you have to drop them. And I think that it's, it's important for people to realize that you can do anything with the profession that you're in. You can be any, any, 
anyone in the profession that you're in. If you want to be in management, you don't have to go into business. If you want to run a business, you can go into PT and run clinics. You know what I mean? So um, that's kind of where I'm at, just exploring more of the field. You know, I follow a lot of people on Instagram and, you know, people like you who are in PT school or people who have already graduated and uh, Instagram has an amazing community of physical therapists um, that like to share their stories and their experiences. So that's kind of what I've just been doing um, besides trying to study for the GRE, which is actually super hard for me right now. (laughs) When do you plan on taking it? I initially wanted to take it by the end of October, um, Mm. but I kind of took a a week and a half break. And so I was like, okay, well now I need to push my date back. I haven't officially picked a date, um, but the school that I want to go to is UCSF. Mm -hmm. and they I went to a webinar of theirs and they recommended taking the GRE twice because they super score the GRE scores oh interesting um yeah so that's what I am planning on doing um is taking it hopefully by the end of October if not then early November and then by depending on how I do then probably sometime again next year we shall see because I'm not taking any classes right now so I might as well study the you know study and take the GRE and then um try to get observation hours however I can in the middle of this pandemic (laughs) oh that's got to be hard now yeah absolutely what what hours do you have under your belt as as is um I have I worked at a PT clinic so I think I have over 250 which is not it's well beyond the minimum um but it's just in one setting which is ortho um, and you know, or that clinic had ortho in peds and in neuro, um, as well as pelvic health, which was really cool. Pelvic health was, that was amazing to learn about and see, uh, it's, it was men's and women's pelvic health. And we had a lot of like postpartum moms, um, that would come into the clinic, but it was, you know, like I said, all ortho and I really need inpatient hours. So that's kind of what I'm trying to tackle next. I had that lined up for me a few months ago. Um, I was working at a hospital and I was like in touch with the rehab director and everything. And then COVID hit and was like, ah, can't, you can't get these hours quite yet. So um, I'm trying to figure that out right now with the inpatient hours. Yeah, for sure. I think for sh- one thing that not a lot of people know going in when you're applying for PT school, one thing that I recommend that like you're doing is diversifying where your hours are, right? So you have your out, you have your outpatient ortho, which is what pretty much everyone thinks about when they think PT. It's like the sports, yeah. typical knee injuries, shoulder injuries, or whatever, right? But another thing that people don't know exists is inpatient, which is physical therapy in a hospital or you're staying overnight. Um, and there's different kinds of settings as well that are related to like, you know, inpatient acute care, uh, acute rehab, or I mean, uh, rehab rather. And I didn't even know that existed. So guys, that's one thing for listening for anyone that's looking for hours. It's just, I guess it's hard to find hours now, but try to diversify your different locations. Like it's cool if you have a bunch of hours in one spot, but like, I think what schools look for is like, how much exposure do you have to the different field, subfields within PT? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cause mm-hmm. I did, I did an outpatient ortho one. I was there for, I was working there for gosh knows how long like years <laughs> yeah so I racked up hours there and then I did a rehab hospital for a good like 200 hours and then I think I did another I did another outpatient place but yeah mm-hmm. just try to rack up as many places as you can yeah I remember um during the UCSF session somebody even said that even if you meet the minimum like let's say you only have a hundred but you shadowed in, you know, like 10 in one setting and like five in another setting. They'd rather accept that student than somebody who has a thousand hours in one setting. Um, so it's, that was really interesting to hear. Yeah, there you go. And what, um, what resources are you using to study for the GRE? Um, so I've gotten this question quite a lot just because I post about it a lot on my Instagram as well. Um, and I know I talk about Instagram a lot, but that's kind of where I've, it's like my centralized hub for literally everything. It's kind of like my blog right now. Um, but I'm using Magoosh primarily. I signed up for their online, um, plan 
And it actually took me a, a hot minute to figure out my plan because I didn't know what plans they offered. Um, and then there was a, a video that finally broke it down for me on what they recommended. And they, rec they recommended doing the 30 day one first. And then if you have to extend, then you can. So Magoosh is pretty much the only thing that I'm using right now. Um, and I'm on, let's see, like day four. And I've already learned a lot. Um, you know, they do videos. You, you can buy the book and just use the book, but the videos really help me because I'm somebody that needs to kind of see it visually and kind of feel like somebody's actually teaching me. Um, so that's, uh, that's something that I've been using quite a lot and it's uh, super helpful. Um, they talk about a bunch of like verbal and math strategies. And I'm just sitting here like, oh my gosh, if I had just known this in undergrad, my math would have been so much faster. <laughs> Have you taken the GRE already? I have not. Okay. So that's something I'm a first timer for the mm -hmm. GRE. Um, but, you know, I kind of just think back on the SAT and the ACT. And the only thing that I could say is it's just another standardized test. And Literally. Like, yeah. like those two things, like you, the GRE doesn't test how well you know certain topics. They pretty much test how good you are at like answering a certain type of question and the yes. strategies that you can use to kind of critically think they want you to think about logic they don't want you to think about getting like the right answer um yeah yeah that's exactly i was about to say oh, you stole that from me so i'll let you have that but <laughs> yeah so basically the gr read is literally it's not about how much knowledge you know necessarily it's about how if knowing how you take that specific exam so that's why I did Magoosh as well. I'm, I'm looking through my email to see which plan that I did, but I think I did the 30 day plan. I think I bumped it up to like the three month. I went all out for the yeah. GRE because my grades were trash and <laughs> my GRE score was first GRE score was sub, I'd say subpar. And I was like, I need to do something to like make up for this. So I was like, I'm going to go balls to the wall. I'm going to study like a madman. Yeah. The GRE. And I did really well. I studied for like three months maybe I think I overstudied to be if I'm looking back <laughs> I think I studied like way too much like way too crazy I think I studied more harder for that than PT school how <laughs> uh, how many times did you take it I took it twice okay okay yeah so I took it at least once. you didn't take it like four times yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> so I did well the first time and then I did really well the second time I was really happy about thank goodness but yeah I used mm -hmm. Magoosh um their program is really great. Like Ruthie was saying, it goes over like how to un answer the questions. I went through every single unit, every single practice problem. I did everything. Um, I had a, like a study schedule set out. Um, it was like during my gap years too. So I had nothing but time. So I, all yeah. I did was study GRE. Oh my gosh. But that's the thing though, is it's hard. Like I have been out of school for less than a year and my brain is already it's okay so <laughs> you feel I, it like shrinking <laughs> yes like I took a diagnostic exam you know I just took a, a free practice exam and within the first hour I literally felt like my brain was exploding I didn't believe in fatigue you know like mental fatigue until that very moment because I'm so used to you know just going through school for the past like however many years from middle or from preschool to the end of undergrad, just going year by year in this routine of exercising my brain. And then all of a sudden I take a break and then I get back into it. And I'm like, how, how did I, how did I spend eight hours a day in school? <laughs> but yeah, yeah it, it's crazy. Um, the other thing too, that I was actually going to talk about, um, when it comes to PT and I think this is important, um, is your own health and fitness. I completely mm -hmm. forgot to mention that and I didn't know how to weave it in, but um, that's something that I'm kind of going through right now. I see you with your posts on IG. <laughs> I, see you with, I see you getting fit over here. Okay. I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, I just kind of got to a point and I, I feel like a lot of people during quarantine are bettering themselves mentally and physically, which is amazing. Um, but I think personally, just from my experience, I think it, it was life changing for me. And it's, I think, how do I say this? I think it just took a huge, I think that like focusing on my own health and fitness impacted my why, like my purpose for wanting to be a physical therapist. 
And it made me realize that I can't take care of patients if I don't take care of myself. And I think for current student PTs and even actual PTs, um, that's something that I am seeing a lot. I mean, in our community, I feel like we're a lot good, or not a lot, we're a lot better about taking care of ourselves and making sure we're exercising and eating right and stuff like that. But in the clinic that I worked in, um, there was a PT that was just literally working back to back. She didn't eat for like 12 hours. And, you know, I tell her, I'm like, how do you have time to work out? She's like, I don't. And I'm like, that's not okay. Because you may not have any injuries and you're not a patient in our clinic, but you might end up being a patient in the hospital for overworking yourself. Um, and so I think that's just really huge is balance. Um, and just making sure that you're taking care of yourself before you try to advocate for your patients. Um, something I've learned during quarantine, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I can attest to that. Like, it's definitely like fitness is definitely what helped lead me towards PT because I really enjoy working out. And it's been hard for sure with my clinicals, like to find time to work out. I like, I mean, when I didn't have clinicals, I was working out five, six times a week. Now I'm doing like maybe three. Yeah. Um, but I like it is really good for my health and my mental health as well. Just like way to relieve stress. And it's like, yeah, like there's so many PTs I know out there like, oh, I have this injury. But like, oh, you know how to fix it, right? But like, yeah, but I don't do it. So it's like yeah. you got to practice what you preach, you know? Oh, like, absolutely. Like you, you, you have the knowledge to do it. You got to set the example, set the precedent for yourself and for your patients. So. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that you're right. Like that should be addressed. People should be taking care of themselves and their fitness as well. And I mean, we're not perfect, you know, yeah, like, no all of us at some point will slip up and, you know, we'll fall off and stuff like that. And I think that's what happened for me is just because I, I was an athlete for a long time. You know, I did sports in college. So when I retired and all of a sudden I fell out of this structure, I was so lost. And it took me a solid two to three years to figure out um, wow. Okay. Hold on. Let me take a second to just <laughs> take that in. I can't believe I've been out of sports for that long. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, it took me a, a good two to three years to find my groove. And I'm somebody that, that kind of, I'm very self-critical and I kind of like, I'm very hard on myself. And so when I take the time to sit down and just think about that, that, you know, you know, I'm always focused on like, oh, I wasn't where I was last year or the year before that. But when I think about it, I'm like, I did a lot of soul searching and kind of like introspection in terms of how to fix my mental so that I could take care of my physical. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been a long time coming, but I'm really glad that I'm finally in a, in a place where I am viewing health and fitness in a, in a way that's very sustainable. Um, it's not just like, oh, we're just going to diet for for a, a month or two months and then go right back to bad eating habits, you know? And I, I think I've come to a point where I can diet, but still eat like the stuff that I like, you know, like I'm Filipino and we eat a lot of bad food. Oh God, Filipino <laughs> diet is just, it's, it's not the healthiest guys. Just, no, not at all. You know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that that's something that was super valuable to me. And I think, uh, if, if anything, if there's anything people are going to take out of this podcast, it's to take care of themselves and, you know, just start today. Now, Rika, we talked all about a lot of stuff regarding, you know, what you're doing for PT school, uh, your whole journey, you know, GRE, um, the accepted system. Uh, what are some final takeaway tips that you can give all those pre-PT uh, pre students that are struggling out there? like stressing out about grades, stressing out about not being good enough. What are some final takeaways? Um, grades are not your life. And I know a lot of people are like, if they're not my life, what? Does GPA matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's really not, you know, um, I've heard of stories of people getting in with low GPA, some people who don't even meet the minimum. Very rarely, you know, that's a requirement for most schools, but um, you know, or people who just meet the minimum, the 3.0. Um, I, I feel like I am now very attuned to people getting in with low GPAs. But when I was an undergrad, I was like, oh my God, I have to have a 4.0 or at least like a 3.6 to get in. I don't have a 3.6. I can't be a doctor, that kind of thing. 
Um, but grades are not your life, but your experiences and what makes you you is super duper important. And I want to tell people that they shouldn't throw their passions away just because they want to get into PT school. Um, you know, there is more to physical therapy than grades. Like when you think about the practical, um, like when you're an actual physical therapist, what are you going to talk to your patients about? You're not going to talk to your patients about your grades, <laughs> especially when you're no longer at PT school. Um, but you're going to talk to them about your family or that you like rock climbing or you like to dance or you know, all kinds of different experiences. And I think that's what people, I, I want people to remember that that is very valuable. Um, and also to really just value relationships um, that you kind of build with people along the way. So that's professors um, or, I don't know, just friends that you meet. I mean, you and I, Ruben, we met at Digital Income School you know, um, but I think that throughout the past few months, we've learned a lot from each other. Um, and I think that that's something that a lot of people I feel like struggle with is, you know, like letters of recommendation and stuff like that. But I'm like, if you just build those relationships with people early, you don't have to stress about it. Um, so I guess those would be my takeaways. It's just, you know, to not take life, like <sighs> school is not your entire life. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> I'm like stressing nice. about how to say it, but it, it's just not. Um, but yeah, so it's just, you know, life is life. And something that I kind of tell myself all the time is that if we die tomorrow, will I be happy with the life that I've lived? And you know what? When quarantine started, I said, no, I would not be happy. And so now I really try to live my day as best as I can. And I treat people as best as I can because you really never know. Man, yeah. Absolutely. Good tips. <laughs> Guys, listen to her. She was really passionate when she said that. I felt that through the camera. <laughs> so please, <laughs> if there's one thing you take away, listen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ricky, again. For, we finally did this. We're probably, I'm going to have to give you a sequel episode just because I, like <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel like I did you bogus by taking so long to get you on here. Oh no, you're good. I got you. I have a lot. I have a lot more to say. I can go on for days. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay tuned, guys. We're definitely gonna end up doing another episode soon, then. But I want to thank you, Ricky. Thank everyone that listened. Um, if you guys want to check out, I'm gonna throw on plug your gram. I can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna include her Instagram and stuff in the description of the podcast. Whether you're listening to this on whatever website or on YouTube, I'll throw that on there. And make sure to check her out and support. She has great content. And guys, that is the end of the episode. We are out of here. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks for guys. watching. And I'm going to go eat some ice cream. Later, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for tuning in to today's episode of Broken Stressed. If you enjoyed the podcast, make sure to smash that follow or subscribe button to get notified whenever new episodes are released. If you want to connect with me on social media, you can find me on YouTube or Instagram. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in. And we'll see you next time.